Get three months of local news for just 99 cents a month. You'll get unlimited access to the news you need to stay engaged and connected to your community. Visit DuluthNewsTribune.com slash subscribe now to get three months of local news for only 99 cents a month. Hello, Northlanders. It's Monday, July 10th. I'm Wyatt Buckner, the Duluth News Tribune Minute, presented by Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union. The average MPECU member saves over $785 a year in better rates and lower fees. And with MPECU, every ATM is your ATM. With their free checking program, you get ATM fee reimbursements at any ATM anywhere in the U.S. Check out Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union services online at mpecu.com or visit their offices in downtown Duluth, Arrowhead Road, or Miller Trunk Highway. Now here's a look at today's headlines. A man was reportedly shot at a residence in Virginia Saturday morning. At approximately 10.20 a.m., the Virginia Police Department, St. Louis County Sheriff's Office, and Minnesota State Patrol responded to a report of a shooting at a residence on the 600 block of 9th Street South. Upon arrival, a man was taken into custody without further incident, the release stated. The News Tribune generally does not identify suspects until they have been formally charged. The victim was transported to a Duluth hospital. The status of the victim was not known at the time of the press release. The suspect and victim were familiar with each other. Police said there is no ongoing threat to the general public. The matter is still under investigation. Between sessions of C.J. Ham's annual football skills camp on Saturday at Walt Hunting Stadium Marv Heikenden Field, a line of kids and families seeking pictures and autographs extended for more than 50 yards. Ham, a Danfield High School alum and veteran Minnesota Vikings fullback by way of Augustana University in South Dakota, has built a reputation of being generous with his time and knowledge, and Saturday was no exception, as he met each person before running out to work with the older cohort of players. Ham and his wife Stephanie, with the help of Essentia Health, the NFL Foundation, and the Duluth Superior Area Community Foundation, awarded the first Ham Family Scholarship earlier this year to Duluth East graduate Rachel Hagen. Hagen, who is a Duluth News Tribune All-Area Team Girls basketball player for the Crosstown Greyhounds, will be enrolling at the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point in the fall. Proceeds from the annual football camp, the fourth edition of which took place on Saturday at Ham's alma mater, support the scholarship fund. The scholarship is meant to support BIPOC students at nine schools in the Duluth Superior area. And also on the topic of sports, Dan Williamson is here to tell you about our baseball and softball players of the year. Thanks, Wyatt. Each high school sports season, the Duluth News Tribune recognizes prep athletes by selecting all area players of the year. For the spring sports season, selections are made for softball and baseball. We begin with softball, and it's a repeat recipient as superior catcher and shortstop Emma Ray has been chosen for the second straight year. Ray batted 556 with six home runs, 36 RBI, and 27 extra base hits to lead the Spartans to the state championship game. Not only is she the Duluth News Tribune Player of the Year for a second straight year, she's also the Superior Telegram Player of the Year for a third consecutive time. I wouldn't trade Superior or any other schools but Superior for the world just because, like, the foundation that they've given me. And, I mean, I owe them a lot of credit for, like, what I've done because without them I wouldn't be where I am today. Emma will continue her softball career at Division I Northwestern University in the Big Ten. Switching to baseball, after a long recovery from a procedure on his knees in September, ESCO pitcher and shortstop Cale Haugen battled through adversity during a storybook season, leading ESCO to their first state baseball title. Among his stats, on the mound, Haugen was 8-0 with a minuscule .27 ERA to go with 98 strikeouts and an opposing batting average of just 120. Besides the DNT All-Area Player of the Year award, Haugen is also the Pine Journal's All-Area Player of the Year, that award for the second straight year. I locked in from the start. I mean, we started open gyms in January. I went to every single one of them. You know, my knees are still a little sore, a little stiff, but I did what I could, and I just, I really bought into the, the team. I bought into the season, and I think that really helped me have a successful year this year. Kale will continue his baseball career at Division II Minnesota State Mankato. You can read more about Emma and Kale in the prep sports section at DuluthNewsTribune.com, as well as see photos, videos, and all of the selections for the DNT All-Area Softball Team 
and the DNT All Area Baseball team. Wyatt, back to you. Thanks, Dan. Now here's a look at your forecast, brought to the News Tribune's Best of the Best Awards. Good Monday. Duluth will be looking at a chance for some showers, especially during the morning hours with the cold front passing on through. That's going to knock temperatures down, especially up in the north. High of 76 in the Duluth Superior area with a northwesterly wind at 10 to 15. Overnight tonight, a few clouds are possible with temperatures falling into the upper 40s. Northwesterly winds lighter about 5 to 10. On Tuesday, more sunshine back in the picture up to 75 degrees, but still cool for Wednesday with more clouds expected. A chance for a few spotty showers as we head into Wednesday night and early Thursday morning. That'll keep temperatures in the low 70s before we see another chance for some spotty showers on Friday with temps back in the mid 70s. I'm Storm Tracker Meteorologist Jesse Ritka. Thank you to the Best of the Best Awards for their support. The contest is an annual celebration of the best the Northland has to offer when it comes to businesses and organizations to make the Northland a better place to live. Nominations are now open and accepted until Friday as the first part of the competition. Voting will take place August 7th to August 21st. Nominate your favorites at DuluthNewsTribune.com. Reporting for today's episode was done by Brielle Bredston, Brandon Veal, Jamie Malcolm, and Jake Batarski. Thank you for listening to the Duluth News Tribune Minute. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.